Brian Michael Bendis and Sarah Pacelli crafted something so incredible with Miles Morales. I don't know if you've gone back and read those classic Marvel comics, but I encourage you to do so. I've become such an enormous fan of Miles Morales, and that is directly because of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which came out five freaking years ago. Can you believe how fast we're traveling through time? Well, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is out there, and I wanted to talk about this movie today. I went to see it with my daughter Ruby, and she's got some thoughts on the film as well. This is not going to be a spoiler-filled review because there are a ton of things to spoil in the movie, and honestly, this is a movie to be experienced as free from knowledge as you can possibly be, although you definitely need to see Into the Spider-Verse first, and it's surprising to me to find that people still haven't seen Into the Spider-Verse because it's widely available. I think it's on Netflix, I think it's on other platforms as well, and it's a masterpiece. It won an Oscar, so see that movie if you haven't seen it, and then recognize what it has done to the animation industry because it has completely transformed the ideas that people can have with animation. All you have to do is look at the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that's coming out in August or watch Puss in Boots, which was also fantastic. But Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse really lifts on a lot of the ideas presented in Into the Spider-Verse, specifically the idea of this multiverse with all these different spider characters and how things can be different but kind of similar and echo ideas ideas and concepts from universe to universe. And we see that again in Across the Spider-Verse, but what has happened is because people have been toying around with interdimensional travel and jumping from universe to universe, things are starting to go a little bit awry. And what we are introduced in Across the Spider-Verse is this organization of meta spider humans that all work together to protect each other's universes. And it's a really big concept and it provides all kinds of interesting options for the animators and the filmmakers to go and you can probably imagine a few of them you know lots of interesting cameos and animation ideas and it's really overwhelming I don't know if I've experienced a movie that's hurled as many ideas and concepts with the velocity and the ferocity that Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse does all of these different interpretations of animation and what that means as it's threaded and we'll see scenes with characters going through one one style into another style and bouncing back over here into another style or they'll look over to their right or their left and they'll see a different kind of look to the picture and it's all collaged together in this unbelievably artistic way and you wonder how the frack they could conceive of this let alone do it let alone put it all together and make this pastiche of concepts and imagination and ideas at this pace and that's the other thing is that this movie doesn't slow down it doesn't expect that you're going to catch it all on the first viewing. It just hurdles through plot and through these character bits and these little story bits. But there's a grounded humanness to all of it, which is I think has been true with the Miles Morales storytelling all the way through, whether you play Insomniac's Incredible Game, whether you read the Bendis and Pacelli comics, whether you've seen Into the Spider-Verse, just to get into that world, that authenticity has just been wonderful. And that is definitely counterbalanced by the awesome score that Daniel Pemberton put together for Into the Spider-Verse, but it's even better better in Across the Spider-Verse and all of the great musical acts that are licensed and sprinkled throughout these movies as well. Just this beautiful thoughtfulness, you know, just trying to examine the cultural significance of this character and of this property as reimagined from these different vantage points and perspectives. And I think that's also exemplified by the collection of artists and animators that have built these movies that are set all over the world. There's a huge contingent of them here in Vancouver, British Columbia. It's just an overwhelming marriage of international ideas and different types of concepts and perspectives and styles. It shouldn't maybe work as well as it does, but somehow under the guidance of the directors and the producers, it really comes together. And you can also understand why it's taken so long for this sequel to come together. And also when you see this movie, you can understand why it's being split up into two movies, Beyond the Spider-Verse is the next one. I don't know when that's coming out, but I can't wait for that film. I hope it's soon. But the other thing that this movie does is it kind of projects the possibility that we are going to see Spider-Verse tales forever. I mean, there's a real sense that they can make animated series, like television type series or streaming series. They can make lots of other movies. We do get stories that follow characters a little bit longer than we did in Into the Spider-Verse, I think, which really focused on Miles Morales and his tale. Miles is still the central character. It's still about Miles. 
but we get a lot more viewpoints and a lot more ideas of how broad this story can go and how far we can go with all of this. There's also a lot of empathy and sympathy with all of the characters that includes the villains, and I think that's an emotional intelligence that this movie, the series, has projected all the way along. And that sort of empathy of the real danger that these characters have always faced as well, and that was a big part of Into the Spider-Verse, where we saw, spoiler alert, a massive death with one of the main characters right at the beginning of the film, and it sort of leaped from there. This movie, I don't think, for me, hits with maybe that same kind of wow, I've never seen anything like this before resonance that Into the Spider-Verse did, because obviously it's picking up on a lot of ideas and principles and philosophies of the first film, and it's expanding on it. And also, it's the middle part of this trilogy. It's the Empire Strikes Back of where we can go. But like the Empire Strikes Back, it really presents all of these new ideas and new angles and new characters that are all mind-blowing. It's an incredible artistic achievement. I also feel personally that it's a little hard for me to encapsulate how I feel about this film because I've only seen it once. And not only is it fast and funny as hell, there's jokes coming all the time and there's visual jokes and, and audible jokes and great dialogue and great character bits and stuff, but there's just so much to take in. It really does ask of you to pay attention, but also see it again. So I can't wait to see it again. But it also doesn't have the resolution of the first film. It doesn't sort of tie up, even though there were lots of threads left with the first film. This one, even more so, it acknowledges that we are moving into a sequel, which I can't wait for. I do think that this movie is a triumph. I'm so blown away by this film. I'm so absolutely taken by the fact that we've got this new animation multiverse to just keep exploring now. And I think Sony Animation Studios have just done a remarkable job just handling this with so much love and care. And I can't wait to see where all of this goes. So I'll come back and score it for you guys. But before I do that, I wanted to let my daughter Ruby take the stage and hear from her about her thoughts on Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Ruby, what'd you think about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse? It was a really good movie with a ton of highlights. It was definitely funnier than the last movie. Were you laughing the entire time? Yeah. <laughs> Without spoiling too much, what was one of the things that uh, you thought was the funniest in the movie? When they said, catch Spider-Man, and all of the Spider-Mans um, pointed at each other. It was hilarious. There were a lot of new Spider-People introduced in this movie. What was your favorite one? Peter Parker's daughter, Mayday. Why? She's adorable, and she was way too smart for her age. How do you think this movie kind of progresses the story forward from Into the Spider-Verse? They left us on a huge cliffhanger, so they have to make more movies. They have to. But how is this an improvement or an extension of the things that they introduced in Into the Spider-Verse? There's way more characters. It's a lot funnier. The only thing that I didn't like as much as the first movie was the music wasn't as, like, interesting. What did you think about the artistic quality of the movie and the way that they used different types of animation? Well, sometimes I felt like, hey, I could draw that. But other times I'm like, that's the best thing I've ever seen. So it was very interesting. <laughs> Did you get a sense that Miles Morales is starting to grow up a little bit and starting to really come into his own with the responsibilities of being Spider-Man? Yes. With great power comes great responsibility. How did you feel about Haley Steinfeld's character, Gwen Stacy in Ghost Spider? -Man? She was really cool. Like, her style was cool. At the start of the movie, when we first saw her, she was playing in a band. She was amazing. Did you like that they focused a lot more on the other Spider characters and gave us origin stories for other ones? Yes, I loved that. They would do, like, first it would be Miles Morales and then Gwen Stacy, and then they would go to this random person that nobody knows. But then when they finished that chapter, they would flip to the comic book that's about that character. Talk to me about what this movie says about imagination. That clearly people have it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it would take a lot of imagination to make such a cool movie. It's definitely out of the ordinary. Do you think that this is going to inspire the animation industry and lots of other animated movies to think outside of the box like this series has been? Well, yes, definitely. The first one already inspired a few movies, like Puss in Boots and the Last Wish. Mm -hmm. That's what it calls. Um, there was definitely some like comic book vibes when there was explosions and stuff like that. What are you going to tell your friends about Across the Spider-Verse? Well, Sadly, that it exists because none of my friends seem to know it. And I don't know why, because it's amazing. <laughs> and they should also to watch it. 
It's amazing, it exists, and you need to watch it. <laughs> Did you love that there were a lot of people dressed up as spider people at the movie screening? Definitely, it kind of surprised me. There was only one of like the original Spider-Man. Like, like almost everybody was Gwen Stacy, and I loved that. Was there anything about this movie that you didn't like? Just that the music wasn't as like amazing. Like it wasn't just like, you mean the pop music, the, the, the songs? I guess so, it was more like mellow, and that's like the only thing. Okay, what are you gonna give Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse? I'm gonna give Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse a nine out of 10. Thank you, Ruby, great insight, great observations, and man, I can't tell you how wonderful it was for me to see this movie with my daughter, because there are some really big emotional moments, and to be able to hold my daughter's hand and watch them together was very meaningful for me. This is an incredible movie, and this franchise uh, is one of the most special movie franchises I've ever experienced in my life, and I can't encourage you enough, if you have not dipped in to the Spider-Verse waters yet, see in to the Spider-Verse and see across the Spider-Verse as soon as you possibly can. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10.